segment for you called Faces and New Places. And we're going to start off with Chris Sale. Dylan, Chris Sale, uh, Red Sox great, White Sox great, guy who likes to cut up uniforms, which we will get into later. Chris Sale is now a member of the Atlanta Braves. What do you make of that acquisition for the Braves? I love this move. I, I really do. I love this move a lot because – when you look at uh, Chris Sale, obviously he's had the injuries. He's had some unfortunate injuries. Um, he's had some that maybe could have been controllable with his motion and stuff like that. But I think this is a move that Alex Anthopoulos can make with the Atlanta Braves. This is a move that he can go ahead and say, you know what? We can take that risk. We can afford to do it because there's certain moves that y- you can do. Like he's a left-handed arm. If he doesn't make I don't know say he only makes 10 starts this year I think the Braves can still survive and win about 90 games like there's not a wrong move here now the extension kind of shocked me they don't really like to pay high dollar money to to big players obviously but that has been his uh, mindset whenever he acquires a player he goes ahead and makes sure that he locks him up he did it with Sean Murphy he did it with uh, the first baseman Matt Olson so uh, Anthopolis really does get his players going in that area. But I think Chris Sale in that situation gives him a fresh start. It felt like in Boston he won the World Series, and then it's been injury injury riddle after that. So he, he's trying to find his place right back on a big league mound where he can really start to get things going again. And hopefully it's a career resurgence for him heading back down to the South. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I think this is a move. This is what I would call a good risk, right? If it works out, we could see the the Atlanta Braves hosting the Commissioner's Trophy in October. Um, if it doesn't, I don't think it will have that huge of an impact because usually the Braves are are stacked. They're so smart front office wise. Uh, I think this is one of these things where Chris Sale, you know, the, I think his best days are behind him. I think we can agree on that. But if he can stay healthy, I think he'll ultimately be a net positive for the Braves. But don't expect Chris Sale to, to take the take the bump every five days and expecting an automatic seven innings with double digit strikeouts every time, right? Those 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 days are are long gone. But I definitely like this move uh, from the Braves, and I think if he can stay healthy, I think it can ultimately be a net positive for the Atlanta Braves. I like so, that as well. I think he can. Yeah. I think he can make it happen. Yeah. Moving to a, another big time starting pitcher acquisition. Now we're going to the AL East. And the AL I'm sorry, AL East team is the Baltimore Orioles picking up Corbin Burns. Uh Dylan, have they solidified an ace in that rotation? I think they have. I think they have. Corbin Burns to the Baltimore Orioles really got me excited. Not that he's out of the NL Central, which I was hoping for being a Chicago Cubs fan. I'm wearing the Padres hat because they played today. But um, the the Corbin Burns thing, I really think that this is a good move in terms of their organization because they have such a surplus of young talent. And they're at a win-now mode. They won over 100 games last year. Brandon Hyde has just been a great manager for them. Remember, he was a bench coach on the Cubs – 2016 World Series run, or he was under Madden um, for that as well. So, I mean, it's it's such a good it's such a good place for him to go. The uh, they needed more starting pitchers. They got John Means back. Bradish a little banged up. He's gonna, I believe, start the year on the injured injured list. But um, they have they needed a bona fide starting pitcher with proven experience in that rotation because they got some good years out of some young guys. You still have some nice talent in there with a Grayson Rodriguez and stuff like that. But adding a Corbin Burns, just another veteran who proves he can take the baseball and and he's definitely one of the best pitchers in baseball. Yeah, absolutely love this move. And I also hate this move because he's now in the AL East and he's going to have to face that Yankees lineup a whole bunch, but no, this is a great pickup from the Baltimore Orioles. Think about this, Dylan. They made this move the day after they got new ownership. That move was ownership saying, Hey, Last year wasn't an anomaly. We just didn't win 100 games for no reason. No, no, no. That was a move uh, saying that we're here to win and we're here to stay. Dylan, they currently, you mentioned it, they currently have the best farm system in baseball. This year is now the third straight year with the number one prospect in baseball, with this year being Jackson Holiday. So now adding Corbin Burns, if you can solidify uh, the back end of that rotation, hey, watch out. But by adding that ace in Corbin Burns, 
the Baltimore Orioles, man, they're for real. They are. I, I mean, this that's going to be an interesting division. I'm yeah. not ready. I think that uh, the team on your ball cap might be making a little push. I hope so. I speaking of speaking of the old New York here, Juan Soto, one of the biggest acquisitions of the offseason. The Yankees pick up Juan Soto, and man, do I love the addition. Now, I'm gonna take the Yankees blinders off here. I'm gonna take the Yankees blinders off here and just speak to you, speak the honest truth. The Yankees needed a superstar that cannot just hit home runs. No, they needed a big time bat to spray the ball around the field and is a really good hitter. Juan Soto fits that description. He's not a boomer bust guy. He's one of the best hitters in all of baseball. And he also balances that lineup too. Uh, balances the lineup too, right? Adding a lefty in Yankee Stam. That's perfect. But now Aaron Judge is going to get some cushion and have some opportunities to get more RBIs and take a lot more pressure off of Aaron Judge. Uh, and it also seems like Juan Soto's love being a Yankee. You check the social medias. Uh, his PS5 controller is a Juan Soto uh, pinstripe controller. So, um, so, but usually we see with the Yankees, big time names that are newcomers to the Yankees, they either shrink or they shine in the bright lights of Yankee Stadium, right? We saw it with Sonny Gray. He couldn't handle it. Josh Donaldson, Joey Gallo, Jacoby Ellsbury, they couldn't handle it. But I believe in Juan Soto, he's built to be a Yankee and he'll do just fine. I love this move. I, I do. I really love Juan Soto because. I think in this situation, now I will come out on the record and say this is a one-year rental. He'll be in another Ooh. New York form in the next year or so. But um, this is going to be a rental piece for the Yankees. This is one more run with Aaron Boone to prove, hey, we gave you a very good team, especially after they go out and sign Snell in a couple of days. Trust me on that one. Um, Blake I hope so. doing this rotation, I think. And plus, you look at a Juan Soto. You mentioned spraying the ball around the field. I'm more excited about the added lefties, not just him, but the the Alex Verdugos and Trent Grishams, the other left yes, dicks that can come in and hit in that lineup. And it's definitely something that can impact the balance of that team. They've needed balance for years. They've needed balance since uh, since Mark Teixeira left the roster. They needed balance yeah. since Granderson left, and they still have never had it. So adding another left-handed bat, they got some of that when they traded for Rizzo a couple of years ago. But I, I think it's just a great star player in a star market. And how do you not love that? I think he's going to spray the ball around the field and he's going to he's going to put up monster yum, numbers. Could be an AL MVP. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And, and uh, I want to follow up with this. Like I mentioned, Aaron Judge is going to have some pressure off of him now. Do you think he will play even better without that pressure? I think so. I think at times last year he was doing too much. Now, I am worried about his toe. I don't know if you saw that come out the other day, but uh, he said it's something he said. Yeah, he said it's something he's going to have to maintenance for the rest of his career. Don't yeah, like hearing that. And he's a center fielder. So uh, at that frame, I, I hate that news. Maybe, maybe Stanton, he's slim. Maybe, maybe he can throw him. That, that, that terrible speed round in third. Maybe he's got some gas now. Put him in center. But no, um, I think I think in terms of judge, maybe DH him more. I, I mean, I guess you do have a good center fielder in Grisham that could be yeah. something that could play there. But uh, you could still move for Dugo over. I don't really like him in center, but it gives you the opportunity and option now. Um, you lose a little bit of offense if you do put Grisham in there in center field, but. It's still an opportunity to go out and uh, and make make some moves in terms of going on there with with uh, with Judge and Center. I think it's something to maintenance. Question: Another follow up. At what point do we see the Yankees move Judge to first base? Let him take some. He took a few uh, took a few practices at first base last year. We've already seen the Phillies do this with Bryce Harper. I feel like this is in the near future, right? Because, like I said, that foot. That toe, that definitely worries me. I don't want them, you know, logging a six, seven Aaron Judge out in the center field every day. That's not that's not very conducive for the contract and for and for the life of the Yankees. I think I see DH more than I see first base with him. I think with that toe, you don't need him in the field. It's just an added stress. Like if you're a DH, keep him on the bench, relax, go hit, go hit four times a night. Maybe first base is where he puts Stanton. Yeah. 
if he's got better feet. I know he's getting older. He's a big frame over there, but you could put him over there. And then at that point, you could have Verdugo in left. You could play uh, Soto in right. You could move, uh, figure out center field as it comes, maybe a deadline acquisition there if you want. But um, I just think that first base could be a better fit for a Giancarlo Stanton than an Aaron Judge. No, I, I, I can't disagree with that. Uh, moving on to our final faces in new places. And this guy was the premier pitcher in the free agent market. And that guy is Yoshinobu Yamamoto, somebody who I thought the Yankees were in on and the Dodgers came and swooped him up. Uh, but Dylan, how do you think Yoshinobu Yamamoto will be in a Dodgers uniform? Talk about pressure. I want to talk about, you know what? Let's go two box here, Abe. Let's talk about right. um, Yoshinobu Yamamoto. This guy comes right in, and he's got so much. I don't think a I don't think a player has more pressure going into a situation than Yamamoto in baseball. Really? You're talking about Not a guy. E- hold on, hold on, hold on. Not even Shohei Otani. I don't think so. Because no Otani is signed for stupid money. He's the highest played, highest paid pitcher in all of baseball. In all of baseball, Yamamoto is the highest paid pitcher. He's going to take the ball on opening day, most likely. I don't think you give the ball to Glass now. I think if you sign Yamamoto, you got to give him that money. You got to give him that ball. But I think this is this is just crazy. I've never seen it in in my entire life. 25 years old, throws the ball really hard. He throws it really nice. He looks solid. But I think that this is a good fit. Where where better could you put a player like Yamamoto, though? You've seen a lot of international stars, uh, especially Japanese stars, shine in in L.A., whether it's – They like being on the West Coast. Yeah, the West Coast really fits, and you have Otani there as well. So the deferred situation with that kind of – is strange but Yamamoto got his money got it up front he's ready to pitch so he's a funky guy he throws the ball really hard I think he's going to be one of the nastiest pitchers in all of baseball but once again it comes with almost unrealistic expectations in terms of what he's supposed to bring because you see the guys that are making this much money they're perennial Cy Young contenders Mm -hmm. and you're putting a guy who's never thrown a pitch at the major league level right up there with those guys so not a lot of star power in the National League in terms of starting pitching, but, uh, yeah, he, he's definitely got to be one of those horses that uh, they definitely bucked out the money to. Yeah, I think it's always interesting seeing the transition of Japanese pitchers coming from Japan to the MLB. Now, Yamamoto has elite stuff, just insane stuff. They The Dodgers post, I believe it was the first day of pitchers and catchers, they posted Yamamoto's bullpen, and it was filthy. It was disgusting. He might have the best splitter in all of baseball right now. And honestly, might be like just stuff wise, he's t- probably top three in all of baseball. But I do expect him, like you said, there's pressure there. And that's why I agree with you a little bit. I expect him to go through some growing pains facing a, a, a big league lineup every single night. Um, it's I don't think it's going to be all smooth candy and roses, you know, the first two months. But I think once he gets his feet wet, you know, once we get through the all-star break, July, August, dog days of August, I think we will see the best of Yamamoto. I, I can see that too. I think uh, when you look at him, he has the ability to um, to definitely work through that. And you saw with Ken, Kodai Senga last year. It wasn't the mm-hmm. best start, but there he had a stretch like towards the middle of the year where he looked like one of the best pitchers.